Welcome back to Reverie Under the Moonlight. We're now heading into the Forlorn Monastery, where things are a lot more peaceful than uh, what's going on outside in Car City. So let's talk to some folks. Okay. So you can keep talking to this uh, person here, and you can keep giving money, but I don't think it has any means to anything. It's just something you can just keep throwing money at. I don't think you get any reward or anything like that. thing we're going to find out by talking to all these folks here is that they don't really like the queen. Like, at all. Alright, now we come to another crossroad. We can go up, down, or to the right. Uh, going down leads to another area, so we'll skip that for now. We're gonna go ahead and go to the right because uh, we get something that helps us when we go up. So, we'll head this way. And one thing I'm gonna recommend you do while you're in this area is you should equip the fairy tier, so that way you can increase your resistance to uh, a lot of the enemies in this area, because a lot of enemies give off the curse status effect. And if you remember, curse makes it so that you can't use any items at all, even passive ones. So I urge you to do that. And here's just an example of what would happen if you didn't have that equipped. Uh, these skull-like ghost things will emit a gas that causes curse. And you only have to be caught up in that for just a split second in order to catch curse. So... Yeah, you should probably have the fairy tier equipped. These barrels have some strange markings on them. Wonder what that means. But I, what I do know is that if you attack them, they will blow up and probably kill you. Here's a good place to earn some money if you have the magnet stone. Because all you have to do is just run across and you'll get all these money stars. Oh, and a new shop cape. All right, let's, uh, what are you selling? Oh, nothing new. Okay. Whoa. You must be the master that's surrounded by cats. Okay, so, she did give us a key, which we'll be needing for a door later on. But 
But anyways, let's head up here and uh, see what's going on up this way. Well, there's a door. We may be the keys for this one. I guess not. And the reason we came up here was for a vitality fragment. Okay, so we made it back at the crossroad, and I'm gonna quickly save, because I don't want to have to do that trick again. And now, we can head up, and uh, see what's going on upstairs. Or, well, up this ladder, anyways. Looks like the upper path led to more monastery. Well, alright. Let's head on to the left and see what's going on this way. So, this guy here we're going to try to kill immediately, because his attacks are really tough to dodge. So, I just want to get him out of the way now. But that's what he does right here. He just shoots a stream of stars into the air, and then they come swooping back down, and they kind of home in on you. So that's kind of why I just wanted to get him out of the way. But he's guarding something. Let's see what he's got. So this item's pretty interesting, because it doubles your attack at the cost of taking some damage. And uh, it's pretty useful for bosses that you just don't give a crap about uh, doing no damage runs. Whoa. Big bell. Big savings. Oh. Alright, so now let's head over to the right and see what's going on this way. Hey look, there's a door. I wonder if the key's for this. And it is! Alright. Oh, jeez. Well, there's another save point, which means there's probably going to be another boss nearby. But before we do that, there is a fake wall right here. And it looks like another tunnel that I can't get into, but we'll come back to it later. But first, there's an ivory bug down here. So the boss fight up ahead is very complicated, and I didn't want to ruin the moment that it was setting up. So instead I'm just going to shut up for this bit, and I'm going to make a supplementary video where I explain a lot of the mechanics about this boss. Um, for what it's worth, this is the boss fight that made me want to LP this game in the first place, so...
So the partner fight is actually very complicated and uh, there's a lot to unpack here. So why don't we start at the base level and work our way up, starting with the attacks. So the partner has four moves total, starting with the lightning strike. Uh, whenever she raises her hand into the air, a lightning bolt will flash for just a brief second and then it will flash again, actually doing the attack. So the very first flash is meant to signal you that that's about to happen and that you should probably get out of the way. The second move that the partner has is a dash move. Now, I technically count that as an attack because it does damage to you if you happen to be right where she's going to end up. So that, that kind of counts as an attack. And the distance that she dashes is just a little short of being halfway across the arena. So two dashes is more than enough to reach the other side of the arena. So you should keep that in mind because that's something she might do if you're on the on the other end. And her third move is she'll take two swings with her sword and then backflip. And this is where she's going to be the most open to attack. Because if you're quick enough, you can actually pull off a full combo by stunning her temporarily. And this is where you can get the most damage in. And her last move is she'll leap into the air and then plunge down into the ground. And it makes sort of a bluish impact effect appear. Now that effect doesn't actually hurt you, but it does cause curse. So I highly recommend you have the fairy tier equipped during this fight because you don't want to get cursed whatsoever during this fight. Especially if this is the first time you're fighting her. So once you get her down to 60 to 40% health, she does this animation where she runs her hand across her sword. This is the signal that you're in phase two of the fight. And in phase two, it's pretty much the same as phase one, except her sword attack now has a sort of a pirouette kind of move. And getting hit by that pirouette move does a lot of damage, so you should probably watch out. So the best way to think about this fight is it's sort of like a dance in a way and the partner is the lead. Every move that she does, you will follow up with a move of your own. For example, at the very start of the fight after you dodge the lightning bolt attack, she will dash forward. So what you want to do at this point is you want to run up so that way she'll stop short and initiate her sword swing attack, and then you can just dodge roll behind her and counter attack. This is where you're going to mostly deal most of your damage. And the timing on this is really crucial because if you roll too early, you'll end up making her turn around and dash again. And then unless you're really on the ball and able to roll again and again, because she's going to follow up with her sword swing, uh, you're going to end up taking a hit. So, so what you're looking for is as soon as she stops dashing, she begins her sword swing animation. That is your signal to roll, not before. And once you're in a position to counterattack, you want to just follow up with a full combo and then no more because if you stay too close to her for too long, she'll probably do a move that will end up hurting you anyway. Because a lot of her moves have short to medium range, so you want to keep your distance from her after you stun her. So once you distanced yourself from her, you can follow up with some arrow shots, and usually she's going to want to use her lightning attack again, and then you can just follow up with the same pattern. But sometimes her AI kind of bugs out and she just keeps doing the sword swing attack. And to which case you could just keep shooting arrows at her until her AI corrects itself. But you can also just jump in and go for another full combo. And that might knock her AI back into her routine. But that's kind of weird that uh, sometimes she just keeps swinging her sword even though you're nowhere near her. As for the plunge attack, you want to stay back a little bit. Because her initial jump will probably hit you in the face and then you take some damage for that. And, and if she's going to land really close to you, what you want to do is jump instead of just standing there. Because if you just stand there, even with the fairy terror equipped, you're probably going to get cursed. So you want to jump and attack, and then follow up with a full combo if you can get away with it. As for the second phase of the fight, all you really need to do is just anticipate the pirouette move by rolling again. And that's going to make it really tough to get your full combo in because it's putting a lot of distance between you and her. But if you're quick enough, you can pull off the stun. And if you don't feel really confident about that, you can just roll away and put more distance between you and her and just shoot arrows the entire rest of the fight. And that's the partner fight in its entirety. And our reward for beating her without taking damage is... Wait a minute, we already got this. Oh wells.
Well, there's the fight. And for defeating the partner, we get a crest fragment, which might have something to do with that door all the way back in Car City. However, it's merely a fragment and not the whole thing, so we might have to find more pieces in other areas. But what it does do is it gives us a new bow charge ability. Uh, we can charge the bow a little longer, and what it will do once we reach maximum is we'll do a rapid shot, which is really useful for taking down enemies with lots of health, but it, at the cost of uh, charging your bow for longer. But it's kind of worth it. Well, we don't have that many options left to go, so why don't we check out this ladder down here? Well, that about does it for this video. Tune in next time when we go into the Cinder Chambers. <laughs>